Good morning, good morning. This is Mary from Real Music, Real Talk Radios. How's everybody doing? You know, we want to thank you for sharing your time with us this morning. We want to thank you for bringing us in your living room. So I'm, I'm suggesting to get your favorite cup of coffee, your favorite drink. I'm, I'm talking about soda pop. <laughs> Talk about why. Get your get your favorite soda, your favorite tea, and and all your cheese and crackers, and we're gonna hear some good sound talk this morning. All right, so we have Pastor Thompson and First Lady Thompson this morning, all the way from Albuquerque, Kirky, New Mexico. <laughs> I can't get it out this morning, maybe because I haven't had my favorite tea this morning. But anyway, good morning, good morning. Pastor and First Lady, how y'all doing? How y'all doing out there? Uh, we caught it all jar early in the morning, and we're having a great morning just fellowshipping in the things of God and fellowshipping with you this morning. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you. Thank you. I am so blessed to have you guys. I shouldn't say guys, but to, to have this, <laughs> this famous couple here. I am just so blessed. I am so privileged. I don't know what to do. Amen. Pastor Thompson, I just don't know what to do, Pastor Thompson. Yes. Well, you know, you know, we're going to just jump right in it. All right. Okay. We're going to jump right in it. Like, whoop, we're going to jump right in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> this morning. All right. So okay. tell, tell me a little bit about yourself, you know, where you were raised, all that stuff. You parents. know, um, hey, hey, man, I'm from what they call a Bible Belt. I'm down from New Orleans, Louisiana. Oh, hey, man, it's a wonderful place. Hey man, gumbo, there you go. <laughs> so it's a wonderful place to, to be and to live, you know, gray, uh, raised on good Cajun food, amen. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, um, uh, to tell a little about myself, you know, being in the South that my family were Bible-believing Christians, and mm -hmm. so they took me to church to understand the purpose and the direction in life that God would purpose for me. So at an early age, I was introduced to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And in my book, I kind of make a sarcasm that I say that uh, in church, when I went to church with my mom, the only thing I really understood was getting there before Sunday school in where I can get some warm, some cold milk and hot donuts. Oh my goodness. So I didn't <laughs> learn a whole lot, but uh -huh. I did go to church. But there were certain things that resonated in my spirit, like Proverbs uh -huh. 3, 5, and 6, trust in the law with all your heart. So there's some things I learned at an early age that would ultimately shape uh, my character and the direction in life. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that to say this is that uh, although I was raised in a church, I developed a gift and talent that God has purpose for me was music ministry. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand how the two would come together and ultimately shape my character and direction in life. Mm -hmm. So based on that, I learned to play music at an early age. And I uh, performed in a world-renowned Mardi Gras parade down in New Orleans, Louisiana, sailing mm -hmm. down the Mississippi River in the Mark Twain and mm -hmm. playing music. So at the same time, from an early age, I had a call upon my life, but I didn't understand what a call of God was, although I had been studying in the church uh, as a boy, a, a young boy. So uh, mm -hmm. my music career led me out to California. And so I began to perform with renowned entertainers like the Godfather of James, James Brown, then uh, Rick James, the Silvers, and a lot of people that are renowned in Rick James, music, huh? R&B music. Uh -huh. Yes, all of those. Matter of fact, you know what's interesting, I try to get through this quick, is that when I was a little boy, I used to do the James Brown, and mm -hmm. my mother used to run me to bed because it was late, and I was up dancing. But mm -hmm. the same guys I listened to as a young boy in 1984 on CBS record label, mm -hmm. I was with an R&B group called General King, and I actually had a chance to record an album with James Brown band, the mm -hmm. same guys I listened to when I was a little boy. Oh, so that okay. was the pinnacle in my career. So it mm -hmm. kind of shaped me in many ways in terms mm -hmm. of what my ministry would be like being solid and teaching the word of God and being solid in my music ministry. So you bring the two together and it shaped my character and my assignment that God has given me that's mm -hmm. flourishing today. You know, it, so, it sounds very interesting. Um, you was raised in a Christian family. Is that correct? Yes. The Bible-based yes. family. But yet you were listening Amen. to secular music. So was that a conflict? Correct. Correct. Was that a conflict there? Yeah, you, well, know, well, you, you know, you and it, Christian and R and B, you know, as <laughs> as my mom would say, the devil's music. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> you know, you know, so, I, I actually I actually you know, I actually I actually love the question because 
you know, here's, here's the thing is that although I was raised in a Christian family, the question mm -hmm. is to what level did I understand the accuracy interpretation of the very mm -hmm. word of God I was studying? Mm -hmm. Because I, I didn't understand the liberty was in the word of God that was mm -hmm. set me free, free from things that was composed to the things of God. But mm -hmm. I enjoyed secular music until I became into an understanding of revelation knowledge in terms of what the word of God actually teach for the children of God. Mm -hmm. And right now, I don't I don't really uh, have a great condescension for secular music. All I just say is people don't understand the truth in terms of what make you free, because even those that play secular music is a gift from God. But at the same time, the question is, are they glorifying God in that gift in terms of attributing their gift and talents to glorify mm -hmm, God mm -hmm. and not just in self-consumption? Oh, so I, I had see. to come to a point to make a distinction of oh, who the glory okay. actually goes to. Oh, okay. Because, I mean, yeah, make it plain, it, huh? Make, face make it plain, Pastor. Make it plain. <laughs> <laughs> on the face of the earth, just think about it. On the face of the earth, Everybody's operating in some kind of gifts and talents, even if they don't recognize it, because Amen. that's how we survive, based on uh -huh. the gifts and talents of one another. Uh-huh. Amen. And those Amen. people come into this revelation. Right, right. Amen. So Amen. That kind of explains a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, because some people but say, secular well. Mu secular music, yeah, uh -huh. secular music, it, you, you know, it, it's how I actually learned to play music and secular music. Exactly. But nevertheless, I turn out and, and how to transition what uh -huh. I do with that gift, whether I use it in secular world or the gospel world, that glorifies God. I do understand. Amen. So, so what what instrument do you play? You know, I was raised up playing drums. I used to play in a marching band in school mm -hmm. and in Mardi Gras parades. But uh -huh. after a while, when I got with CBS record labels, mm -hmm. I understand it was about writing songs and producing hit songs. So my whole mindset about music changed when I was introduced, became a, a, a member of a major recording label. I mm -hmm. learned that it was about product and demand. So you have to play a certain style of music that was marketable to sell because although we love the gift of music, it's also a business. I do understand. And the business is, you know, for, for music in itself, you mm -hmm. know, this is this is aspect. Sometimes we um, play music to glorify and worship God, mm -hmm. and that's true. But then mm -hmm. also there's a business aspect of it that deals with product and demand. So it's all about the word of God saying my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So that's applicable for every area of life. You have to have knowledge to be effective at whatever you're doing. Well, yeah, and you know, when I was playing, they would tell me, God's gonna bless you. God's gonna bless you, but they didn't put any dollars in my hand. So now <laughs> if you say it's a bit you, you know, but he gonna bless you. And you go to choir yeah. rehearsal. I mean, you play for two choirs, then you then the district meetings, then the convocation, then you have the children's choir, right. the men's choir, you play for all that, but but God's going to bless you in those days. So are you saying right. that those days have right. changed? Is more or less like a business now? Well, Sister Henderson, what I'm saying, remember what God says in his word. He said, my people mm -hmm. are destroyed for lack of knowledge, right? Okay. So we know he's talking primarily about spiritual things. But if you can't take spirit things and apply them in natural realm, you're going to mm -hmm. still miss it. So mm -hmm. you need to take spiritual truth and know how to implement it in a natural realm. Because everything you deal with that deals with product and demand is from a business perspective. And, and we have to understand, e even if you go back to saying God said for man don't work, he don't eat, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, so that's what God exactly. said. So man uh -huh. is gonna, God is going to feed a man. It's through the, the labor of the man. That's why God equipped the man to be strong to labor. So we have to understand not only the spiritual aspect of it, but how we take the spiritual truth and implement it into the natural realm. Because one thing for sure, they used to always say, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, right? Yes. But I say, to tune the noise up, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so so, so it's, about re it's about revelation knowledge that gives you spiritual insights on how to implement that which is spiritual in the natural realm. All right. So I got Amen. clarity on that. All right. So I'm gonna throw one more one, 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 one more thing I like to say is in Deuteronomy okay. in the eighth chapter, it says, uh -huh. God that giveth us the power to get wealth, right? Mm -hmm. He said he Amen. giveth us the power to get wealth. So we mm -hmm. need to understand our relationship with God and the revelation and authority we have in Christ to be able to implement that which is spiritual in the natural realm. Therefore, the 
blessings and the provisions of the kingdom of God could be in the manifestations of our lives. Oh my goodness. I got to get to one of your sermons, pastor. All right. (laughs) All right. Amen. 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 You know, I'm going to throw this question out there. What is your feelings on gospel rapping? Um, you know, um, Sister Henderson, that, that's a million dollar question. And this is a million dollar question, I'm gonna try to give you a million dollar answer. Okay. This is my take and understand. Uh-huh. My take and understanding is this that one thing I'm asked all the time as we travel and do our ministry, many ministers ask me, Well, well, Pastor, how could what could we do to keep the interest of the younger people? Amen. They ask me that. Uh-huh. And I tell them this. Well, you can't expect a young man that's 20 years old to act like he's 40. He's not 40. He's 20. So therefore, we have to be innovation to understand uh, the Mm -hmm. time we're in in terms of generational things. So I would say that this, as long as the rock music uh, uh, gives a God consciousness in terms of the message, Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. But it's also an integrity and character that we represent as being children of God and coming into uh, um, gospel rap. So Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of the young people are doing gospel rap. And I say it's a good thing because one thing for sure, at my age category, after my wife and I do a great Sunday service, we come home and we have a good meal. We may be thinking about going to bed soon. Mm-hmm. But but the young folks, when they come home from church, they have a good meal. They're talking about going out and have fun. Exactly. So we can't come against mm-hmm. them because we did it as well when we were their age. Exactly. So we have to find something that's pretty much speaking to their generation, but also bring it into the framework as to acknowledge God and how they do it. I agree. So I in agree. essence, I'm saying as long as they're around and they concept acknowledge a born again experience where they're going to glorify I God agree. in the activity, I, I say it's all good. I agree. I definitely agree because we once were young ones. <laughs> You know, so I Amen. agree. I and nobody, agree. And nobody couldn't keep and nobody can keep <laughs> us from dancing and singing. <laughs> I agree. Amen. I agree. So you know, so so to have a good activity in the church that caters to the mindset and activity of the youth is a wonderful mm-hmm. thing, and how they engage the youth and uh, the functioning of the house of God, and also their relationship with God. All right. Well, I do agree because we cannot kick our young Amen. people out of the church. We have to draw them there. Yeah, I and, do agree. And, and, and you know something, and if you really listen to our music ministry, although our age category, sometimes they think us, you know, we should come back laid back. We don't come back and laid back. We come in because when I became a Christian, I didn't stop dancing. I just changed partners because yeah. I understand <laughs> what true liberty and freedom is. Because if you don't sing and dance, I really believe something is wrong with you. Amen. 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 It, it's not right. like a good. It's Don't not like a good song in your spirit and a amen. good dance in your feet. You know, amen. music is. Uh, amen. Music is is actually therapy. You know, yes, the certain it music is it's, it's actually therapy. I mean, if you're feeling down yeah. that day, turn on some music. <laughs> turn, turn on your favorite yeah, song. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna have to turn on praise the Lord. That's what <laughs> I'm going to turn on your song, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, First Lady Thompson, I don't want, want to leave you out. What do you want to add to this conversation here? Oh, Tell us a little Lord. bit about you, uh, about you, Pastor. I mean, um, Lady, First Lady Thompson. Let me get the name right first. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, I, I grew up in a, a, a home where music was paramount. My mother was oh, a, okay. a, a pair. recording artist. So, oh, okay. Uh-huh. But um, I, I used to sing in youth choirs and my, throughout my adult life, I sang in choirs and mm-hmm. um, I've always loved music, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, and gospel as, mm-hmm. especially. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I met my husband, you know, him being a musician and into music and all of this, oh, it, no, was, it felt very I, familiar. Catcher, huh? I catch her. (laughs) (laughs) Amen. And, um, you know, I, um, I shied away from singing a lot Mm -hmm. when I was younger. Um, I was, you know, a little shy and bashful, but um, I love seeing music and I was always in choirs and all of that. And then when I met my husband, he started writing songs and, you know, producing music. And I remember one day I was trying to share with our, our praise team mm-hmm. how the song went, one song went. And 
my husband and everybody started saying, well, why don't you sing it? I said, me? No, I don't mm-hmm. sing lead. And, <laughs> and I finally, he, he convicted me because it's like, you have a gift. Why are you going to hide it? Why not let God be the one to determine whether you go forward with it or not? Just give all it right. your all because he gave Amen. me the gift. And I, you know, I was so convicted and I said, okay. And I went ahead and sang it. So now I'm singing lead on one of our, um, uh, the pit. I sing oh. lead on that one on the album. And um, I just never would have thunk <laughs> that I would be singing lead. But through the conviction of the Holy Spirit and and, and, mm-hmm. and allowing God to use what he put in me, mm-hmm. you know, I went ahead and did it. So I, I'm, I, I'm overjoyed by it. And we have others coming and I'm being uh-huh. challenged to do more. And I, I, I appreciate that, you know. Oh, wow. And all glory goes to God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, amen, amen. So it sounds like the mm-hmm. the music was an eye catcher. That how that brought you two together. Huh? <laughs> well, actually, it was the word. It oh, the word. word. Oh, all right. He taught. Yeah. Oh. Now I, I I met my I met my wife. Uh, her brother is a pastor, and I I met my wife. I did a a sermon in her brother's church, um, and that's how I met my wife. It was through the word, and that brought us together to begin to understand our God-given gifts and talents and how to bring our lives together and covenant relationship before the God. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. You know, what are your challenges? Because you look so good, like you don't have any challenges. You don't have, you know, just <laughs> walking with God by faith. But what are your real challenges Challenges in the music uh, department? Well, well, you know, it's interesting because um, I was called by some people in contemporary gospel, not not the seniors in contemporary gospel, but the young people. Some of the uh, radio stations uh, said, well, your style of music may be old school. Now, okay. I, I'm OK with old school because mm-hmm. I, whether old school or new school, as long as we're dealing with the truth. Mm-hmm. And, and there's some things I don't do that I don't want to do. I don't want to break dance anymore, right? <laughs> but, but I'm only saying that there's some things that are uh-huh. happening that people do that I don't want to do. I just uh-huh. want to be able to get the truth over to people on a, a another level because uh-huh. I believe in deeper depths and higher heights because uh-huh. as you were saying, when at one point people told you, just believe God, you're singing, you're praising, and you do whatever you do. And that's understanding God on one level. But to understand how the system of the kingdom of God actually works, that we can bring into manifestation as being heirs of God, our inheritance in the earthly realm. I'm not talking about eternity once we leave these fleshly bodies. I'm talking mm-hmm. about our inheritance and kingdom provisions right now, right? Because we Amen. don't need provisions when we get to heaven. Heaven is well supplied. So we believe in God and whatever we do, even in the word ministry and the music ministry, as long as you could bring it into reality uh, how we live today as kingdom children of God and grace covenant family members. So, oh, so it doesn't, to me, it's not always the style of music, but it's your heart before God, whatever the music is. Because some traditional worship music is good as what God has anointed, but it depends on the condition of your heart. Because it's not always the music, it's also the condition of your heart that talks about true worship. So saying that, so would you say that your music could be part of praise and worship? Yes. You see, you see, once again, as we define what is praise and worship, because you have a traditional perspective and uh, praise and worship based on church tradition. But True. some church traditions may not line up necessarily with sound doctrine or the movement of God's spirit. So mm-hmm. tradition, nothing's wrong with that unless it, you know, as long as it lines up with the word of God. Because every tradition does not line up with the anointing. Although it may be part of church protocol, it's not about church protocol. It's about the inspired word of God that governs our spirit in terms of how we live in this covenant relationship with God. Such good information, Pastor Thompson. Such good information, <laughs> Pastor Thompson. It, it's, it's, it's the truth that makes That's us it. free. <laughs> amen, amen. amen. Now, now, we're going to talk about your sons. All right. A couple of sons, you know, that caught my eye was that get your miracle. Right. So what, what right, motivated right, right. you to, to, um, to do that son or get that title? get your miracle what, what, right. what, what was your deep down well, you know, motivation you know, being raised in in a church house the house of god such as your own life you know we've always heard something said and i challenge 
that verbiage. People say, well, God worked in mysterious ways. I don't believe that. What I believe is God worked in miraculous ways. Okay. So I think if you believe God only worked in the mysterious, that's because you're not close enough to know him, to know his character and his nature. Mm -hmm. God works in the miraculous that talks about miracles. So if anyone should believe in miracles and see the manifestation of miracles, it should be those that are in an intimate relationship with God. So the song, Get Ready for Your Miracle, is always to be an anticipation of a miracle. But a lot of times people don't receive miracles because they're not really expecting to receive one. You see, mm -hmm. there's a difference in That's what you true. proclaim. Like people, people profess a lot of things they're not possessing. So it's not only what you profess, it's also what you possess. So we're talking about bringing the, the miraculous workings of God into our everyday living circumstances. And then the pastor. world can see the glory of God mm -hmm. based on the presence of God in the lives of the children of God. Oh then my can goodness. Say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> So, uh, that song, have so that song gives it. <laughs> so the song Miracles is all are talking about look, get ready for your miracles. You're praying to God all the time. So why not pray according to the nature of God, which is miraculous? Pray for that so you can see that manifestation in form of a miracle in our everyday life circumstances. Amen. 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 We're about to have church up in here. We about to have a new, we about to have church. Not, not, I should say church, not church, but church. You know? <laughs> you, you know, you know, you know, you know, in the book of James, it said count it all joy, right? Mm -hmm. So if the child of God is not counted all joy, that means something has stolen his joy. So mm -hmm. why should we let like, anything steal our joy when we have a faith that overcomes the world? So mm -hmm. there's no circumstance in this world that's purpose. I have the authority over our faith. So by faith, we're going to count it all joy that we rejoice in all things. Giving oh, God the man. Glory. That sounds like good old church right there. Good old <laughs> church. So so we got to get a video of, of you of you preaching, Pastor Thompson. Okay, man. We got to get a video of all that. All right, so add that. You, oh, you, no, you no, know, no, my favorite son, huh? Well, Y'all be saying? having it within the next 60 days. I'll be having a series I'm doing, an uh, internet series, that's teaching the precepts of victory over the mind. So uh, be aware that I do have a series that comes up because uh, it's, it's such a thing that I'm identifying in scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says what the heart man believes. So we need to understand where the heart of, my, heart of man is located. Mm -hmm. Because in a traditional way, you see, it's the, 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 the living heart of man is the central of physical life. But the heart of the mind is the center of spiritual life. But one has to understand that from a spiritual perspective. So if you don't understand the constitution of the human mind, you're going to miss what it means to really be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because the mind is the center, the heart of the mind is the central aspect of spiritual life. But uh, that's going to be taught in a series that I'm coming up with. Oh, okay. remember, remember uh -huh. this. I want you to remember this phrase. The greatest battle you'll ever fight in this life is in, in your own mind. In other words, the greatest battle we ever fight in life is in I your agree. own mind. Amen, amen. <laughs> oh, that's deep. Hallelujah. That's deep. You know, tell yeah. me, what advice would you give a young a young artist, a young gospel artist? What advice would you give them? That's just a young gospel started. artist? Mm -hmm. A young gospel artist? Right. You know, so a lot right. of these kids, they want to, you know, want to make, they think fast money. They want to rap. Gospel rapping. They want to you know, they have a little tune on the keyboard. They're going to be famous, you know. So right, what right, would you right, tell right. someone like that? Right, right. Well, well, the essence is, is not the life we live in the natural realm, but the essence mm -hmm. is the life we live in the spirit realm. And mm -hmm. so unless you have the wisdom of God to make that distinction, then mm -hmm. you won't understand the purpose of, let's say, wealth or becoming famous. Because uh, becoming famous is a platform that you can be heard by the multitude. So the mm -hmm. question is, what? message do you have and what i understand and i understand by my growing in the things of god is it's not all in the message i have it's also in the relationship with god that i have mm -hmm. so the message i have is determining my relationship with god so i would say for the young person not just trying to reach the world but make sure that god reaches you so therefore your life is not in your proclamation but the way you live your life that could be the model for what we understand to be successful as a child of god the okay, child so of God has to understand because mm -hmm. one thing one thing is very deceptive is idolatry. So you got to make sure the things you're acquiring in the natural realm doesn't transcend your relationship with God. Therefore, you're not the model that God could truly use. So I think what you're saying so is start, you, with, start with you first. Start I mean? with you first. I think right. what you're saying is to start yeah. with you first. 
Yeah, because yeah, because man. remember, um, remember, even if the Bible says the Old Testament is our schoolmaster, so we could look at King David as renowned as he was, as the one of the great, if not the greatest king of Israel, he still had to understand his relationship with God, although he was royal in the family of God, to the point that he allowed his mind to leave the, the wisdom and the sovereignty of God that he sought outside of God, and he got into adultery. So we, we, we learn from them things to make sure that we don't follow the example of the activity that will lead you outside of things of God. So it's all about being rooted and grounded in God, no matter whatever platform he gives you in this earth realm. Oh, amen, amen. That's deep. That's deep, Pastor Thompson. That's deep. But, you know, I want to talk about my son. I want to talk about my son. Praise okay. the Lord. What motivates you? you to praise the Lord. What motivates you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard well, that sound. Oh, my goodness. Right, right. You know, it's, it's interesting because now I know a little bit about you based on that song. Oh, really? <laughs> and what I mean. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's yeah. good or bad. <laughs> Well, it's actually, it's, actually, it's actually good because it lets me know you have a, some experience in the house of God and the family of God. Oh, because, okay. you know, that's that's a worship song. But not only is a worship song, it comes with a rhythm that, mm -hmm. that we could identify with. It's sort of like a baby. You don't have to teach a baby to dance. A baby will pick up the rhythm somewhere along uh -huh. the line because it's instinctive and it's natural. Mm -hmm. So the lyric, the message. It's glorifying God, but it also comes in a rhythm. So you got a natural rhythm plus a message that glorify God. And you put them together and you can't miss, you can't go wrong because it, it recognizes God in our life. And it tells me a lot about uh, where you've been based on what you could identify with. <laughs> so it lets me know you've been in the family of God, around the family of God, and you are part of the family of God. Amen? Oh, amen. Oh, okay. That's a, that's a good thing for this Saturday morning. <laughs> Oh my yeah. goodness! Well, thank you, thank yeah, you for that. You, you know, um, right, right, right. You know, you got to, you got to admit that we are rhythmic people. We like rhythm, mm -hmm. so there's you nothing do. wrong with rhythm. It's God given, but it's what you do with the rhythm that's going to make the difference. Oh, you know, we, we're not coming in secular out there where we just trying to shake our body down to the right. ground as secular mm -hmm. music says. But we are moving our body to glorify God that we get good health in these limbs. Amen. And we're going to glorify and worship God with this good health. And nothing's wrong with a good, healthy dance. <laughs> amen. 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 <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, this is a good interview. Oh, my goodness. But, you know, I'm not going to hold, hold you too, too long. But, but let's talk about your book. Okay. How did you start writing? Amen. Um. It's interesting. Now, I know that this is the blessings of God, because I'll just say this to you. When I was in academic education, mm -hmm. I wasn't doing that well at all. Right? Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah. so otherwise, I had no aspiration to being an author. I couldn't even perceive being an author. But you never know what God has purpose for you. Mm -hmm. But one thing I was, I, I was a good follower, but I also was a good listener. So God was preparing me by listening to the word going forward and, and, and planting seed in me in terms that he would use overall. So mm -hmm. when you come up with a concept of victory over the mind, first of all, you have to know when the Bible says fight the good fight of faith, that's a fight of faith. But the question is, where do you fight the battle? Mm -hmm. Is in your mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. Start with If the you mind. really think about it, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, second, uh, second Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 say, weapons are warfare, not current or mighty God, pulling down strongholds, casting down thoughts and that imagination. Mm -hmm. You see, the faculty of mind deals with our thoughts and imagination. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know that, then you don't have any control over what you think. And then if you don't have control over what you think that can see, then guess what? That means you have no control over the life you live. Amen. So this is why in, a, in, in the gospel of grace and salvation, our spirits are quick and made alive. But God say, now, here's what I'm telling you to do. I'm enabling you to do it, but I'm telling you to do it. He mm -hmm. said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So Honestly. then there must be an mm -hmm. essence and being transformed and renewing our mind because God tells us to do it. See, uh, I, I'm in my second book and the second book oh, is really? called... Um, the best teaching instructions or experience. So see, if you don't operate in divine revelation that deals with instruction, then you're going to miss God. Because if it. it's not about mm -hmm. divine instruction, that means you live in life on your own, own understanding and you're really not in relationship with God. But it goes back to the mind capacity. So victory over the mind is a six chapter book. And three chapters I'd like to just mention. 
the one chapter is called Cultivating the Mind. The next chapter is called Sanctifying the Mind. And the last chapter is called Victory Over the Mind. So remember, I'm going to say this. I'm going to try to get through it quick because it's a part of a doctrine. But remember, the first thing that God created in the earth realm with the mm -hmm. principle of life to reproduce after his own kind was the seed family. So for you to have physical life on the earth realm, you have to have a seed that produced a food source that physical life could survive. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. You have to have a seed family that's going to produce fruit exactly. and vegetation in the natural realm that could be life on this earth. So exactly. the same thing is in the spirit realm. In order for you to produce spiritual fruit, that means you have to have spiritual seed. So Jesus said the word, I speak to you, life and seed. So other words, you're not going to have any spiritual fruit unless you first have spiritual oh, seed, my goodness. which is the word of God. So it's all about Amen. cultivating the mind to we get the church. world system out of your uh -huh. mind, to be transformed, uh -huh. to get the system of God's kingdom in your mind, oh, that my goodness. the spiritual seed that you can produce spiritual fruit. Other than that, you are born again Christian, <laughs> but still living Amen. upon the system of this world because your mind has not been transformed. And the only way it's going to be transformed is to receive spiritual seed that's going to produce spiritual fruit. Oh, my the word goodness. Of God. So I mean, you broke it down concept. for us. Amen. <laughs> this is the Amen. concept of my book, Victory Over the Mind. Oh, my goodness. Everybody and might I say it's on, it's, on the it's on the bestsellers list. So the, oh, really? <laughs> really, really. And and Lady Thompson, what would you like to add to this? Oh, well, I'm just enjoying the message. <laughs> um, you know, I always include the first myself. lady. Yeah, I always need to include the first lady. You know, sometimes we say Amen. pastor, pastor. And sometimes you know, the first lady don't get a chance to say anything. <laughs> so, so you know he's got a true past his heart and you know the word uh -huh. he just speaking it constantly right, 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 right. well sister uh, uh let me tell you something mary I, I must say this uh as my wife speaks for herself but you know it goes back to the word the bible say he that finds a wife finds a good thing say that say that Lord, right mm -hmm. so i i have to say that because Amen. um you know, um, we all have times of struggle in different seasons we're in. Mm -hmm. And I have a, a wife that God has blessed her with the wisdom to know how to be inspirational to me in the midst of mm -hmm. my challenges that I can mm -hmm. go on in the midst of it all and count it all joy. Amen. Yes, amen. You know, and that, I think all men should hear that. You know, <laughs> them that find a wife, a wife, W-I-F-E, finds all a good me. thing. You know? <laughs> amen, amen, amen. You, you know, and, and something I like to say about this is one of my challenges that I'm growing in is to take time out and listen to what my wife has to say. Mm -hmm. Because I'm pretty sure she sees some things about me that I don't always see about myself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not always favorable things, but it's not always what tastes good, but it's all about what is good. So I have to learn to accept the things that may not taste good, but I need to learn to change about my character as a man of God. And that's what I depend on my wife to do. And that's what she does in my life. Oh, you need to come back for, for another show. <laughs> <laughs> that's another show. <laughs> we need to do yeah. that one. <laughs> Well, yeah. I have enjoyed you so, so very much. You know, give our audience um, the contact information, how, how you can be reached. Um, we can be reached um, through our website, which is almost complete. And that's uh, sanctifiedarmy.com. Or you can email us directly. And that's sanctifiedarmy at yahoo.com. Those are the primary ways that you can reach us, correct? Right, right. All right. So when will you? Right. When is your next speaking in, in, engagement? Well, what what I'm doing is that um, we I'm actually getting uh, the precepts together for teaching the series I was mentioning to you about victory on the mind, uh, which is the precepts of how you come into a place where you actually, by the will of God and the power of the anointing, the word of God and the administration of the Holy Spirit actually gain control over your mind, which is your thought life. So we're looking to do that online uh, um, sermon and also series uh, within okay. the next 60 days. And one of the reasons for that is because coming out of the, the bondage of this pandemic, uh, uh, many things are opening up where people could gather uh, without the issues of uh, social distancing and all those things. So it's um, 
within the next 60 days uh, by Sanctified Army Ministries, we will have an online series that, that teaches transforming the mind via victory over the mind. And it's primary from Romans chapter 12, verse 2, not conforming to the system of this world will be transformed by the renewing of your mind because uh, the kingdom of God does work by a system and a system is activated by our faith attached to the word of God. Therefore, we have victory over our minds. Oh, amen, amen. So, so within the next 60 days, next 60 days, we'll be promoting that series uh, because I'm currently, um, we're currently located in uh, uh, the city of Albuquerque, New Mexico. But by the will of God, I'm planning to be right outside of um, El Paso, Texas soon. So oh, okay. uh, we are kind of in, in a, uh, 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 let's say, a evangelistic Transformation right now. Okay, <laughs> that sounds so good. You know, you know but I, I, I like to say this. I like uh -huh. to say this because you don't know about the history of my ministry. I was, um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm still a member of, but I, for 20 years I was um, active minister on the ministry roster for the Los Angeles Mission in downtown Los Angeles. Oh, really? So we ministered mm -hmm. to hundreds of thousands of indigent families. So I believe in the word of God being preached wherever the people of God is. Where the people are, it doesn't matter what their life circumstances are, but also the indigent that has been ostracized from society. Uh, we've been very effective in ministering sound doctrine to give people the tool to come out of bondage and operate in their God-given purpose and assignments. All right. Yeah, I go to Southern California. Uh, my daughters are down there. <laughs> so I know about, about just where you're talking about in the Amen. LA area. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much, so much for this interview. And do you have any questions for me today? No, well, you know, I, I don't have any questions as much as I like to tell you that I count it all join a blessing because one of the things God promised me were brothers and sisters throughout the four corners of the earth mm -hmm. that's operating in the kingdom of salvation. So therefore, mm -hmm. to meet a new sister in Christ with your anointing, your personality is a blessing to me today. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And you do. I said, well, I'm going to keep up with them. <laughs> we can do more interviews. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. So we're going to sign off. So and to, and to okay. our radio audience and to our radio audience, uh, this is Mary from Real Music, Real Talk, also your host for Straight Talk About Health and Wellness. All right. So you have a blessed day. Be